Okay, so today's a big day. Today's where the rover finally meets the road. It's day one of project one, of phase one of our van build. And we're really excited, but if that whole mouthful doesn't make it sound like we've got a huge mountain of projects ahead of us, I don't know what will. So we've picked the easiest possible project to get things kicked off. We're gonna be soundproofing our vehicle. We're Sherry and Jim. For the past five and a half years, we've been exploring the world of motorcycles, bicycles, and an expedition four-wheel drive. Right now, we're supposed to be in Siberia driving our Land Cruiser east from Mongolia. But, like everyone, 2020 threw us a curveball. So, new plan. We bought a van. And today we begin the first of many projects to turn it into our tiny home on wheels. Hey guys, so today is an important day. It is day one of actually starting our build, right? Yes. We're getting past the planning and layout and all that mm -hmm. stuff. And actually, this is the part where the rubber meets the road. And so we're super excited. But we're also like in that kind of mindset where it's several days overdue. Um, we thought we'd start this three days yeah. ago and we're still like unloading supplies and ordering. And I think it comes down to two simple problems. The first is we got really excited and we put together a list of all the things we needed to start our build. And then we went to order all those things <laughs> and they're all unavailable it seems like everything's either yes. on back order or sold out or whatever um our windows for example were we originally tried to get them in the middle of july and they said oh well maybe they'll arrive middle of august can't guarantee you you know the swivel seats we have are on a back two, order, month two back months order. yeah yeah so uh, this is a bit problematic the other problem is or the other challenge that's going to take us a little bit of time is that we realized really quickly this is a really small living space and we want that space to be as environmentally friendly and non-toxic non yeah. as possible um, and that's required a bit of research to try and figure out what the best products are we should be using not just in terms of like renewable resources like should we use bamboo to you know for all of our um for all of our cabinets and things like that or um you know what type of insulation should we be using um but also like it gets really sticky when you get into like adhesives and paint yeah. and, and even the wood oh and wood, even right right wood, wood itself has a lot or can have a lot of toxins in it like formaldehyde, formaldehyde yeah, which I, being one main ingredient Right, so what wood yeah. do you use? It's crazy. We were in Home Depot a couple of days ago, and we were reading the warning on like some type of like two by fours or something. It was like warning. It's like a Prop sixty five warning, and it was saying, you know, basically if you drill into it, if you cut it, like if you breathe the sawdust, yeah. any of those things are all like cancer causing. So it's a, it's actually a perfect example of you don't know what you don't know. And we didn't know all these things until we started doing a little yeah, bit of research. Yeah, for some reason in the past, we didn't really thought about this. So anyway, so the, so trying to figure out what we should be using has taken us a little bit of time. Um, but now we're ready to go. And so we've yes. got a bunch of stuff in order. Some things like our Havelock wool have already arrived. And, um, and so today we're starting literally, I think of the <laughs> entire build, the single easiest thing, e easiest project, yes. right? We're, we're going to dip our toe in the water, right? Of right. Our build. So to give you a little insight into how we're approaching this project, we've divided it into phases. And today we'll be focusing on phase one. So we're gonna be working from the outside in. So anything that involves the roof, the walls, and the floor. So things like installing fans, solar panels, windows, and the subfloor, and then insulation. And once that's finished, we'll work on building out the interior. Right, but before we get to any of that, um, we have a more fundamental issue we want to solve for, and that's that we want the van to become a little bit quieter. Yes. Um, it's a problem we've had ever since we picked the van up and drove away from the dealership. There's just a lot of road noise inside. I think it's just a byproduct of having a really big, you know, um, empty box that you're driving around in that really doesn't have much in the way of insulation inside it. So. Today is all about starting a two-step process to solve that. The first step um, is to add some sound deadening to, uh, to these big kind of metal uh, walls and a little bit to the roof, I think to the floors as well. And then the second phase is to add insulation. Okay, so here's the basic idea. What we're trying to do is we want to apply some sound deadening material to big open areas of sheet metal that are very subject to vibration. Um, the product we're using is a, a product called Killmat. Um, 
and Tomac comes on a box and they're just sheets. And it's basically, it's pretty simple. It's basically just butyl rubber um, that has a foil on the front side and on the back side there's an adhesive. Um, and you just can stick it directly to the sheet metal walls of the van. Um, now, Mercedes has already done a pretty good job of applying sound deadening throughout the back of the van. Um, you can probably see it behind me in sections along the lower wall, um, the upper wall, the ceiling, um, and really I think the area that it's conspicuously absent are areas where they've got these stamp outs for windows. Um, you can see one behind me for the rear cargo door. And in those areas, it's just big, empty sheet metal that sounds very tinny. So the idea is we want to strategically apply it to these area, these kind of tinny exposed areas, but not really everywhere else. We've seen van builds where they apply it everywhere. I've seen it where the entire floor is covered in it. Um, and our concern with that is weight. Um, just this one box of Killmat is, I think it's like 16 pounds, and that doesn't sound like a lot, but we kind of translate that into our water supply, for example. And if we can have two more gallons of water in exchange for the weight of this Killmat, then we'd rather have the extra water capacity for a hot shower or whatever. We're pretty much ready to install these now. It's a really easy, kind of a peel and stick process. Um, but what we identified where we wanted to install uh, the kill mat, and we've cleaned the walls, and now we need to measure off and cut the pieces. And then just take the roller and, uh, and roll it down, make sure there's no bubbles, and kind of done. <laughs> Okay, so we've cut these down to size and we're going to apply them to this outer uh, door. Um, we're putting a little bit more here because heard, this door seems to make a lot of noise when it closes, so we really want to deaden that sound. It sounds very, very tinny when it closes. Um, so we want to fix that. Um, so I'm just going to apply it, just stick it on, and then roll out the bubbles. And um, that's pretty much it. We just need to keep uh, applying and repeating through the rest of the van. And then, uh, yeah, we're good. So probably only about <laughs> 25 more of these to go. <laughs> I'm ready for a beer as well. Um, but it's been a successful day. We finished our kill mat project, which is project one of phase one of a long road ahead. Yes. But it is a progress. Many projects. And importantly, it was super easy. Um, a little bit of elbow grease, right? Now, what you said? Uh, yeah. Um, yeah, a little bit of elbow grease. I think it was, uh, you know, our tip would be do not get a cheap roller because ours fell apart within like the <laughs> fourth or fifth roll. Yeah. And then <laughs> caused you us saw a lot of, probably. <laughs> yeah. And that caused us a lot of grief, but we got that sorted out about halfway through and then things sped up a lot. Um, the good news is it made a big difference. So, you know, now yeah. you know, you've got a really solid uh, f 
sound when you tap in these panels before it was really tinny and so hopefully it'll get rid of a lot of the road vibration and um, it opens the door for us to start the second phase of our um, soundproofing which is to install our Havelock wool insulation and that's all about thermal uh, insulation but it's also going to should make a big difference in terms of our soundproofing as well and we'll yeah. have a much quieter van after that so we'll do that in about a week we're waiting for a bunch of stuff to arrive including all of our uh, windows and things like that and our solar panels and uh, yeah and then we'll properly as soon as that stuff gets here we'll be yeah. properly underway with phase one yeah I'm ready for that so if you uh like if you want to oh my god she doesn't know she doesn't know what to ask of you at this point so <laughs> what we're gonna ask of you is to like this even though we're probably making a big mess of it and to subscribe if you want to subscribe just uh click the notification yeah. button and the subscribe button and the whatever button and, um, there are all kinds of buttons you can yeah, click you can watch us but don't click the unlike button no don't click the yeah. unlike button or dislike um it. Yeah, but if you want to find out what happens when we start cutting holes in the side of the van, then uh, yeah, be sure to join the journey. Yeah. All right, guys. Thanks. See you next.